Architects recently presented plans for high-rise towers that can absorb large amounts of carbon out of Earth's atmosphere and ecosystems. Here are the details. New Atlas reports that architects unveiled a revolutionary way to build carbon-capturing cities at the 2021 UN Climate Change Summit, also known as COP26. Speaking at the summit on Thursday, November 11th, senior partners at architectural firm Skidmore, Owings & Merrill presented a blueprint for skyscrapers that can absorb up to four times as much carbon as they emit during construction and their lifetime. The skyscrapers, called urban sequoias, would draw in air from outside and then use carbon extraction systems to remove carbon from the air. The buildings would also come with areas dedicated to growing plants and algae, both of which could be used to capture carbon and to provide fuel for the building. The carbon extracted from each building could be used to create road paving materials, pipes or other parts of urban structures. The architects said if all new buildings were built to collect more carbon than they emit, urban greenhouse gas emissions could be greatly reduced, perhaps by as much as 1.6 billion tons a year. The architects said up to 120 tons of carbon could be trapped per square kilometer if the concrete-covered areas were converted into gardens and cities were rebuilt as intense, carbon-absorbing landscapes. They said that streets could also be retrofitted with proven carbon capture technologies. Walmart billionaire Mark Lohr has launched a jaw-dropping project to build a $400 billion utopian city in the middle of the American desert. Here are the details. CNN reports that recently retired Walmart billionaire Mark Lohr announced plans to build a brand new super city in the middle of the American desert for $400 billion. Lohr said the plan is to construct a utopian city that will be very clean and green, built around the dream of social equality. Famous architect house Bjarke Engels Group has been hired to design the city, which Lohr has named Talasa. Renderings of the plan show nature-friendly architecture covered in foliage and people playing in large parks that crisscross the city. The plans also show many green technologies built into the city. Lohr says his team will be meeting very soon with state officials in one of the U.S.'s less populated regions with the aim of receiving the city's first residents by 2030. The project's first phase aims to build enough infrastructure for 50,000 people on 1,500 acres for an estimated cost of $25 billion. The whole city would eventually house 5 million people within 40 years. Lohr said the aim is to create a more equitable city from the ground up where all citizens would participate in the decision-making and budgeting process. This plan to build a revolutionary new city in the desert echoes that of Mike Reynolds, who after many years of struggling with local authorities, was granted the right to build nature-friendly buildings called Earthships in an area of New Mexico. Over the years, Reynolds' community has built dozens of Earthships, which require no external water, electricity, or sewage connections, and thus save the inhabitants thousands of dollars in municipal fees per year. Although the Pacific Ocean takes the prize for most polluted ocean in the world, the Atlantic Ocean is not far behind, and much of the Atlantic's non-degradable trash seems to come from the American city of Baltimore, where people don't seem to care where they dump their trash. But one Baltimore native came up with a smart way to trap mountains of trash before they float into the Chesapeake Bay. Here are the details. CNET reports that a new invention has been having great success in solving the problem of plastic trash that flows into the harbor of Baltimore City. The inventor of the machine, former museum director John Kellett, said he came up with the idea when he started thinking of ways to mitigate the mountains of plastic trash that would flow into the harbor every time it rained. Kellett combined a water wheel with a design for a hay baler to create Mr. Trash Wheel, a 50-meter machine weighing nearly 50 tons. The Chesapeake River's current rotates the watermill, powering a system of pulleys that, in turn, run a large conveyor belt with rake-like teeth that scoop up floating soda cans, plastic bags, bottles, styrofoam plates, cigarette butts, and other detritus. Two long buoys help funnel trash toward Mr. Trash Wheel's maw and into a floating dumpster that's emptied by a small crew of volunteers. Since launching in 2014, Mr. Trash Wheels has intercepted more than 1.5 million tons of garbage. For times when the river isn't flowing fast enough, Mr. Trash Wheel also sports solar panels and batteries. Kellett can turn on the pumps via his smartphone and check on his invention 24-7 via an online webcam. Hong Kong's fascinating central island is about to get one of the world's greenest and most captivating tower buildings to add to its collection of skyscrapers. The new project has already broken ground and will stand at 2 Murray Road, in the heart of the Central Island's Central Business District. The 36-story tower was designed by Zaha Hadid Architects, and its energy-efficient design was already earned at the building LEED Platinum and WELL Platinum pre-certification. 
as well as the highest three-star rating of China's Green Building Rating Program. Inspired by the layered structure of a bohemia bud, the flower from the bohemia blacana orchid tree featured on Hong Kong's flag, the glass skyscraper features a curved glass facade that will stand out from its more traditional boxy neighbors. The insulated glazing that wraps the building can withstand the region's powerful summer typhoons while reducing the cooling load of the building. Located at a junction of Hong Kong's network of elevated pedestrian walkways, the office tower has direct access to adjacent public gardens and parks. The building's base is elevated to create a sheltered courtyard of covered parks that link with surrounding parks and gardens. The surrounding nature is hereby invited inside as the natural outdoor areas flow into the generous communal spaces of the interior. The health of office workers will also be benefited by the building's air quality monitoring system, which automatically adjusts indoor air temperature, humidity, and fresh air volume to meet demand. The smart air quality monitoring system is one of several smart systems designed to reduce electricity demand. Smart chiller plant optimization, high-efficiency HVAC equipment, and daylight sensors, for instance, will achieve a 26% reduction in energy demand. You are looking at one of the finalist designs of the latest Young Architects competition. The competition brief challenged young architects to create an eye-catching campus for the Hyperloop movement in the Mojave Desert in Nevada. The idea was to design a campus that would not only help advance one of the most futuristic means of transit, but would also serve as a sanctuary of science. The latest Young Architects competitions resulted in one of the most interesting conceptual buildings ever imagined. The competition challenged Young Architects to design a beautiful and practical desert-located campus for the Hyperloop movement. You are looking at the design of Begum Aidi Noglu, Mariana Custodio dos Santos, and Juan Carlos Naranjo. Unlike most buildings, which are usually a little more than rectangular blocks, this conceptual campus rises gradually and smoothly from the desert floor. The trio reimagined a seemingly inhospitable stretch of the Mojave Desert, North America's driest desert that stretches across four states, into an oasis. Their curvaceous Hyperloop test center is configured around four courtyards with water elements that support the growth of tall palm trees and other greenery. The looping building proposal is flanked by solar panel farms that generate renewable energy, while the courtyards are engineered for rainwater collection and gray water recycling. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.